In today's lesson, I'd like you to paint a portrait of yourself in the Impressionist style of Monet. What's happening guys, my name is Nicholas Renat and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at neural style transfer. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So first up, what is neural style transfer? Well, neural style transfer is the process of using a neural network to take the style from one image and apply it to a completely different image. So we call the first image the style image and we call the second image or the one that we're going to apply the style to the content image. What we then get out of that is a stylized image. So you can see from the slide that we have a style image from one of Monet's famous paintings, and then we have a content image, which is a profile of myself. We then apply neural style transfer to actually go on ahead and generate our generated image. So this is neural style transfer in a nutshell. Now let's take a look at what we're going to be covering in this video. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is downloading a pre-trained neural style transfer model from TensorFlow Model Hub. So this is going to make it faster to train. We're then going to pre-process our images or take a look at how to pre-process our images for neural style transfer. Then we're actually going to go on ahead and do it. So we'll actually apply our style transfer to our content image and visualize the result. Let's take a look as to how it's all going to fit together. So first up, as I was saying, we're going to be downloading a pre-trained neural style transfer model from TensorFlow Hub. So this is just going to make it way faster to actually go on ahead and train our model. We're then going to load up our style and our content images into Python, so within our Jupyter Notebook, and apply a little bit of pre-processing with TensorFlow. And then what we're going to do is actually apply our style transfer model to our style and our content images to be able to generate our generated image or our stylized image. Then what we'll do is we'll visualize it, and if you want, you can also output it using OpenCV. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to perform our neural style transfer, there's four key things that we need to do. So first up, we need to import our dependencies and our pre-trained model. Then what we're going to do is write a function to pre-process our image and load it up. Then we'll visualize our images that we've uploaded or loaded up, and then we'll actually perform our neural style transfer or stylization. So first up, let's go on ahead and import our dependencies. So there's five key dependencies that we're going to need. These are the TensorFlow Hub, TensorFlow, matplotlib, and we're also going to need NumPy and OpenCV. So let's go on ahead and import these. Alrighty, so those are our dependencies imported. So we've imported five dependencies, as I was saying. So we've imported TensorFlow Hub. So to do that, we've written import TensorFlow underscore hub as hub. Then we've imported TensorFlow. So to do that, we've written import TensorFlow as TF. So this means that we're going to be able to refer to TensorFlow as TF throughout. Then we've imported matplotlib. So from matplotlib, import pyplot as plt. So this means that whenever we refer to pyplot or matplotlib, we're going to just be writing plt. And then we've imported numpy. So to do that, we've written import numpy as mp. And then we've imported opencv. So to do that, we've written import cv2. Now, the next thing that we want to do is actually load up our pre-trained model. So in this case, we're going to be using the pre-trained arbitrary image stylization model from TensorFlow Hub. As I was saying, we're going to be grabbing it from here. And in order to grab this, we can just copy the URL and I'll include a link to this inside of the description below as well as the entire Jupyter Notebook. So you can actually grab this entire notebook and run through it really, really quickly. You'll be able to pick it up and run through it in no time. So instead of actually copying this URL, I'm actually going to write it out when we load up our model. So in order to load up our model, we're going to be using the hub.load method. So let's go on ahead and load it up. All right, so that's our model loaded. So in order to load our model, we have used the hub dot load method, so hub dot load, and then we've passed through the link to the model that we want to download. So in this case, we've got the stylization model, but there's a whole heap of other models that you can actually download from here. So there's image models, text models, video models, audio models, whole heap of models that you can play around with. And then what we've gone and done is we've stored that model inside of a variable called model. So again, this entire link is HTTPS forward slash tfhub.dev forward slash google forward slash magenta forward slash 
arbitrary image stylization dash v1 dash 256 forward slash 2. Again, I'm going to include this entire link inside of the description below. So no need to fret if you haven't got it from here. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is define a function that we're going to use to load up our images and pre-process them. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is loading up our image using TensorFlow, decoding it and making sure that it has three channels. We're then going to reformat it and make sure it's in the float32 format. And then last but not least, we're going to add in a new axis because our model expects it to be inside of its own array. And then what we're going to do is return our image. So let's go on ahead and define this function. All right, so that's our load image function defined. So in order to do that, we've written six lines of code and the first line is defining our function name. So in this case, we've named it load underscore image. Then to that function, it's expecting us to pass through our image path. So in this case, the images that we're going to be using are in the same directory as our Jupyter notebooks. Now, if you had images inside of a subdirectory, you'd pass through the full path to that image, including the actual image name itself. Then what we're doing is we're using some of the TensorFlow IO helpers to read in our file. So TF, dot io dot read file and then we're passing through our image path and again we're storing all of this stuff inside of a variable called image so we'll actually return that image at the end then the next thing that we're doing is making sure that our image has three channels so we're using tf dot image dot decode image we're passing through our image and then setting channels equals to three then we're converting our image d type or data type and we're making sure that it has the format float 32 so to do that we've written tf dot image dot convert image d type we're passing through our image and we're setting the data type to tf.float32. And then we're making sure that our image is inside of a new array. So we're passing through tf.newaxis to our image and then we're passing through an indexer that basically grabs the entire image. Then we're returning our image. So quite a fair bit there, but this is going to make sure that it's easy to load our image. Now the next thing that we're going to do is actually start loading up our image. So in this case, we've got two profile images. So we've got this park image that we've got here, which you can see there. And we've also got a profile image of myself. So we're going to be using these two as our content images. And then we've got a whole heap of different style images from some famous artists that we're going to be using in this particular case. So the first thing that we're going to do is load up our profile image. And we're also going to load up, uh, let's pick Monet to begin with. And then we'll go from there. So let's go on ahead and do it. So in this case, we're going to be using a load image function to load up our image. All right, so we've gone and loaded up our two images. So we've stored them inside of two variables. So content underscore image and style underscore image. And as I was saying, we've used our load image function, which we defined up here, and then passed through the name of the images that we want to load. So in this case, my profile photo is inside of this image here. So profile.jfif, and then weird extension, but it tends to work. Then we've also imported up the Monet image, which is this one up here. And this is monet.jpg. Now, the next thing that we want to do is actually visualize our output. So let's just make sure that we've loaded these up successfully and that we've actually got some images on our hands. All right, so that's our first image. So to visualize it, we've written plot.imshow. So we're using matplotlib up here to actually show our image. And then we're using numpy.squeeze to grab our image out of that array that we set up out here. So if we actually take a look at this image here, you can see that it's actually a single image inside or this particular image inside of a set of arrays. So what we need to do is actually extract that out so matplotlib can actually visualize it appropriately. So to do that, we're using numpy.squeeze and then we're passing through our content image and then we've written plot.show to visualize it nicely. Now we can do the same thing for our style image or we can actually just replace this with style image here. And you can see that we've successfully loaded up both of our images. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually go and perform our neural style transfer. So let's go on ahead and do it. Alrighty, so we've now actually gone and performed our style transfer. So specifically what we've gone and done is we've gone and used our model. Let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. 
So specifically we've written model and then we've, or we're using our model, which we loaded up up here. And then we're passing two things. So we're passing through our content image and our style image. Now, before we actually pass them through, we're converting them to TF constants. So to do that, we've written tf.constant, then we'll pass through our content image, comma, tf.constant, pass through our style image, and then we're extracting our first result. And we're storing our stylized image inside a variable called stylized image. We can then go on ahead and visualize this. So we can, if we just copy this visualization code up here, we can paste in our stylized image. And you can see we've now actually gone and applied our stylization. Now, if we wanted to, we can also export this image And if we go and now take a look, you can see that we've now gone and output our image. So in order to output it, we've written cv2.imwrite. We've we'll passed through the name of the image that we want to output. So in this case, generated underscore image.jpg, which you can see generated image.jpg there. And then we've written cv2.cvt color. So when we actually use OpenCV, it's by default going to be using BGR. We want it to output to RGB. So we're using CVT color and then CV2.color BGR to RGB to convert the color. And then again, we're squeezing our image and then multiplying it by 255. So we'll multiply it by 255 to reverse the normalization that our neural style transfer algorithm does. So it actually divides by 255 when we output. We want to output by 255. In this case, it's going to work pretty successfully and you can see our image is visualizing there appropriately. But in this case, let's actually go and try this out on some different images. So we're going to try it out on my profile. Now, if we wanted to, we could go and try it out on, uh, which one is pretty freaky. Let's try it out on an Andy Warhol image. So if we type in andy.png and leave our content image the same, we should be able to get some decent results. So again, in order to change our stylization, all we need to do is replace our style image. So in this case here, we're still loading up the same content image just changing our style image. So we're going to do that. You can see our style image is now an image, one of Andy Warhol's famous can photos. And then if we go and apply our stylization, you can see it's, uh, it's pretty unique in terms of what it's doing there. We can go and try out a different image. So let's go and try, uh, who else is cool? So this is Frida Kahlo's image. So we can go test her out. So if we type in frida.jpg, and there you go. So we've now gone and applied some of Frida Kahlo's style to my profile image. Now, again, you could change the content image as well. So I've got this image of a park, so we could go and do that. So let's change our content image. So it's park.jpg. And so you can see our style image is the same, but if we go and sub in our content image, you can see that that's changed. Now, if we go and apply our neural style transfer, that's what our park looks like, pretty abstract. We can go and test it out on, what's that? We can go and test it out on Van Gogh's Starry Night. So let's go and try that out. And so our content image is the same, but we can check our new style image. So that's loaded up successfully. And that's our park with Starry Night applied. Again, you can write this out. So if we go and write out generated image, you can see it's gonna go and write this out. So that about wraps up neural style transfer. So we've gone and done quite a fair bit. So we've imported our dependencies, loaded up our pre-trained model, then defined our load image function, visualized our output and stylized our image. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found today's video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release new videos. And let me know how you went about implementing neural style transfer. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.